Before we start the video guys, you can get your first month of Envato Elements for only $9 via the link below. If you've watched this channel or if you're a video editor, you probably know what Envato Elements is. It's a pretty good deal. Check it out. Every subscription helps the channel. All right, let's get into this video. And how's it going guys? Joshua Lefemi here, live from LA. And I'm gonna be showing you two things that I think you should try during your next music video. There's this video that I just saw. It's actually been out for about four months by one of my favorite directors, Dami Twitch. There's so many incredible music video directors here in the industry right now. And I read that Dami Twitch is actually 25 years old. So that in itself is a pretty impressive feat. The video that we're gonna be talking about is by Omale Low Low, and it's pretty cool. It's time to take a listen. Tell all your friends I love them too I look nice but I'm not so, so good so the first thing that I want to talk about is something that my bro Richie Films aka Ricardo Ramirez actually taught me about a year ago and that's cutting on the upbeat. Now I'm not a music person so hopefully I don't get some of these technical terms wrong but from what I understand a lot of music especially a lot of western music is broken up in a 4-4 four, four time signature. This is basically just specifying how many beats are contained within every measure. So basically you count this out by doing 1, 2, 3, 4. 1, 2, 3, 4. A lot of the time when we're editing we're just trained in our minds to cut on the down beats. The 1 and the 3. So 1, 2, 3, four, one, two, three, four. I feel like the majority of the time we're just trained to cut on the one. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Now we can actually go one step further and talk about the beats that are in between each of the quarter notes. One, two, three, and four. I believe these are eighth notes and what Richie called push notes. They can be represented by ands. So you could end up saying one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and. So we get it. Cutting on the downbeats, aka one and three, can eventually get boring. So the question is, what are these upbeats that we should try cutting to from time to time? The upbeats are the two and the four and all of the push notes in between every number. And what you're gonna see is actually pretty crazy and that the editor of this video ends up cutting on those push notes as opposed to the standard downbeats. One and two and three and four. 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 Next time you guys watch a music video, I want you guys to watch intentionally as far as where the editor chose to cut. And the next time you do a music video, try mixing it up and seeing what you like better. Do you like it better when you cut on all the downbeats? Or maybe choose a section, uh, like a chorus and a, a verse where you just cut on the upbeats and see how it looks. Maybe even mix them like they did for this song. I thought it really worked for this song. So it may be a, an issue of personal preference, but I want you to at least just try this out and know that this is an option that may make your edit more enjoyable to watch. All right, the next thing about this music video that I really liked is it didn't go along the amateur route of just incorporating a lot of just like camera motion, camera shake, all that stuff. Stuff that is definitely great in some music videos, but I feel like music videos are starting to revert back to their feature film origins where composition, lighting are now kind of taking preference over kind of the, the crazy camera motion that we've gotten used to with a lot of handheld music videos and stuff. I mean, I mean, look at some of these shots, guys. Every shot can literally be a thumbnail. That's not something you can say for a lot of music videos. If you took a snapshot out of every one of these shots, the lighting, the composition, it, it's just so intentional, it's so beautiful. Every shot is like a painted portrait that um, it was set up perfectly and composed perfectly so that there wouldn't be any real estate, visual real estate that was taken for granted. There's just so much depth going on. There's things happening in the foreground as well as in the background. If you look at the dolly shot at 30 seconds, you can see that in the foreground, there's a cool parallax motion going on because there's some slow motion of the camera dollying past some railing. And then through that, you have him singing in the in the midground, and then behind him he has um, someone braiding his hair, a woman braiding his hair in the background, creating some cool background movement. So that's a lot of actual depth, but if you remember from past videos, depth is also perceived when you contrast different lighting intensities as well as uh, contrasting different colors. So I see a ton of lighting contrast in this shot, um, the light coming in through the windows are making some really cool beautiful shadows. 
adding perceived depth and look at all of the incredible colors that are being seen the rich greens the yellows the the reds the browns they're contrasting each other so well it just makes this shot so interesting to look at this can be seen in a lot of other shots in this video and interesting to remember when you're shooting um, darker skinned models or talent you want to make sure that they're shot against a background that contrasts well with their skin. So say you have like a, a blonde haired um, Caucasian talent, you're not going to want to shoot them against like a pink or a white background because you know their hair is going to kind of bleed into the background. If you're shooting a, a black haired, uh, darker skin talent, you're not going to want to shoot them against like a, a brown or a red background or, or dark you know, black background because their body's going to bleed in the background. You want some contrast to allow them to pop from the background. So check this out. Great example of what they did here. Um, you have her lit beautifully, soft light, allowing her skin to just pop. Um, I love the makeup that they're using. It's like this, uh, it's very re reflective, it seems like. And then the actual color of the background is this rich um, aqua blue um, that her beautiful brown skin just pops out really well out of. So going back to this idea of putting composition over motion. Um, just look at these beginning shots. These beginning shots are literally, they could be paintings. Like, like they're just so, they're staged and just set up so perfectly. Uh, this, this first shot where that's in the title sequence when he's just staring at the camera, everything's perfectly still. The camera's on sticks. There's like a, just a zoom in, uh, maybe like a digital zoom in. And yet it's such an intriguing and engaging shot. One of my favorite shots in the whole video, actually. There's so much going on, even in the static nature of the shot. He's lit beautifully from one side with some soft light. There's some rose petals on the ground. There's there's a cool um, like uh, semi-transparent drape in between him and the window. Um, the drape is uh, basically tinting um, the light coming in from the side um, blue and you can see that tinted blue light on the back wall. There's some almost cool Wes Anderson symmetry with the two trees on both sides with him straight in the middle. And kind of the stillness of the shot really matches well with the mood of the music at the beginning of the song when it's just very chill and there isn't much happening. I love these shots when they're driving in the car. Again, they're pretty static shots as far as the camera. The car is driving. Um, which adds a little bit of interesting movement, but the camera's actually still static. And you, there's parts where, uh, it, you know, the camera's on one door, filming one, on one side, and then the reverse shot is shown as well. And every time he starts singing, the there's like a, a rack focus to him, to his face. And then when he's not singing, I think like the girl is singing, a rack focus is back to her. And just the, the intentionality of even that just, made me really respect the DP specifically that was on the piece. I like between him and the director that I could tell they actually have to think, how do I capture the mood of this song while still creating an engaging video? And I think they did it perfectly. I felt like I was going on a trip in an art museum and I was watching a music video. The video was that good. Tell me what you guys think below. As always guys, you guys can get a first month of Envato Elements for $9 in the link below. What is Envato Elements? If you've watched the channel, you probably know at this point. It is an incredible subscription service where you can get all of the best digital products. So much, whether it be sound effects packs, stock footage, um, Adobe Premiere or Adobe After Effects templates, royalty free music, anything you can think of as a video editor. It's a video editor's dream. You can get your first month for $9. After that, it's $33 a month but it is such a good deal. You can literally use elements like I do to make you money every month by using all the resources inside to shorten your workflow. Thanks so much guys for watching and as always remember to keep it chill.